Welcome back. <laughs> a little preview of what yeah. you're about to hear. Uh, of course, we're joined at this time by Minor LaRue. He is a digital media and marketing professional. Good morning, Minor. Good morning, Marlene. It's and nice to have you in. tips mm -hmm. are not going to be for the adults and how to market ourselves. This time, we have very important skills for parents. We're talking about safe proofing social media for teenagers and preteens. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And that's a wide topic. I mean, um, when you think about it, just the landscape of all the apps that mm -hmm. you may or may not know your kids are using nowadays, it's yeah. really challenging being a parent uh, in this day and age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what's what stuck, what stuck out, especially with uh, social media and teens? And you know, a lot of parents would say, you know what, I just don't get them on there. I don't give them phones. I don't give them anything that has to do with uh, anything that has to go on the Internet because it's all bad influence. Now, what do you think of this? Well, there's two things that will happen. One, your kid's going to go around behind your back and get one. You know, somebody's going to give them or offer them one, and it's going to look so nice that they won't be able to resist. Or you could take the road of, you know, this is something that's not going away. This is something that you need to live with, and it's part of new parenting challenges, I believe, where you have to learn to coexist with social media, mm -hmm. the dangers and the pros that come with it. Mm -hmm. So while, while uh, uh, because it comes across as peer pressure to a parent to having to give their child a, a, a device. So it's not a no, it's basically to teach them how to manage it. Would you say that? Yes, definitely. And there's actually schools in Belize that use uh, tablets, you know, to actually yeah. um, foster kids' learning experience. You know, technology could be a good thing and can also be a negative thing, depending mm -hmm. on the risks and the apps that you um, have access to. So I think having parental control of what your kid is doing mm -hmm. uh, and being there every leg of the way, um, not to monitor but to snoop around and have them build that trust with you, I think it's very important, especially during the, um, the pre-teens or tweens, yeah. as what it's called online. Yeah. Um, there's so many dangers with all these apps like Kick, Kick It or um, Tinder or Dong, you know, these are all dating apps and they're not really social media apps per se, yeah. but the risks are tremendous if you don't know what they're getting it themselves into. Yeah. And, okay, so let's, let's, let's <laughs> yeah, demystify let's, yes. it. So, <laughs> and, and understand that, Minor, you're from, you have the technical skills, but also you're from a different generation from the parents out there as well who have teens, so, or tweens. So, there's Facebook. There's Instagram and now there's Snapchat. What are some of the apps Pinterest. that parents need to know about? Well, I think the first one will be, um, let's start looking at the apps that the, your kids don't want you to know about. Okay. Mm. Right? Um, and those are what I'll call jailbreaking apps mm -hmm. or hiding apps. Mm -hmm. You know, they actually look like a little calculator and they could hide your text messages, phone numbers, pho photos, videos, especially during the teens. And when you look through your kid's phone, it just looks like a calculator, but it has a percentage sign. And it's actually fingerprint most of the time, so you'll be able to access a separate section of your cell phone. You're kidding. Um, so I think parents need to know that first. Because so check all the apps. Check to be all sure. the apps, definitely. Check out all the apps that your kids are using. Make sure that they are for their age. Mm -hmm. uh, most apps, uh, social media apps, um, you need to be 13 or older, mm -hmm. right? Like WhatsApp, you need to be 16. Um, and the rest you need to be 18 or older, like the dating sites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the things also is that there's also the uh, opposite version of jailbreaking apps. And yeah. these are what are called monitoring apps for okay. the parent. Oh, there you go. Right? <laughs> so um, <laughs> while kids have, have been given all this technology and access, you know, to hide stuff from your parents, there's also the other side of the spectrum where you have like net nanny. You have like um, teen safe apps, you know, where you could actually GPS track your kid. You could actually see their text messages. You could see what they're, who they're calling, um, what photos are they taking. And you could, if they're driving, teen, teen safe can actually, if you know your kid is driving, you could actually pause their phone. So they will literally be able to do nothing while they're driving. Really? To kind of build that awareness of, you know what, you're driving, you shouldn't be texting, you shouldn't be on the phone. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, with freedom comes responsibility. And I think that's one of the things that you need to nurture your kid in. You can't remove it completely because yeah. they'll go rebel. Yeah. on you you know they're gonna find a way to go around behind your back 
and, and say, you know what, mommy doesn't want me to use my cell phone or mommy doesn't want me using technology, I'll use it the minute I step out the house. Yeah. And what a lot of parents <laughs> don't realize, because I've seen this, they take away the phone, you know, and they think, I've limited your contact. But then the kids have the tablets or they have their laptops. And yeah. pretty much everything you do on your phone, you can do on your laptop. And your tablet. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, and, and that's one of the reasons that it's good to introduce um, not just applications, but screen time, mm -hmm. you know, to your kids at a younger age so that they can become used to. Yeah. And it doesn't get to a level where, where they didn't have it ever before. Mm -hmm. And now it's become like a social media addiction, yeah. you know. Or you get Facebook depression, you know, yeah. and uh, how to deal with all these different emotions that you go through because, believe it or not, people get very touchy if there's a class photo, to give an example, and everybody's tagged on it, but I'm not. Yeah. You know, I feel left out. Yeah. You know, yeah. and things like that, like, I'll be like, this doesn't make sense, but kids are picking up on all these social indications. Yeah. yeah. And you like I, I've said before, I was once schooled by my nephew that if you don't get a certain amount of likes, you delete your you photo delete your, yeah. because it must have yes. whatever yeah, amount, amount of likes. Right? And that's, um, that's actually very important, and I'm glad you mentioned it. That's what's called the uh, competitive framework, uh -huh. where right. you would um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, where you would actually look at how many number of likes you get and compare yourself uh, most of the time in a negative way, you know. Yeah as to what your friends are doing. So I think very important to not be in that, um, to look out for your kids being in that competitive framework because yeah. you know it, it becomes uh, a Facebook addiction yeah. and it could also lead to Facebook depression. And, wow. You know, I, this fascinates me because it's a different time. I, I'm so glad I didn't grow up in this era, but it yeah. doesn't mean that uh, there you can shield teenagers from this. So when I found out about you should delete this photo thing and, and you're right about the comparing yourself, but that's where it gets dangerous. Because mm. then if I'm 14 and my friend who's also 14 posts risque photos and she gets more likes and I can't get the, the likes, number I yeah. want, well, what do we think is going to happen next? Yeah. I'll get more and more into that. And then there's like that addiction where likes lead to a happy happiness index it, it releases dopamine right yes definitely and I think one of the things that you have to have a chat with your kids while being on social media is that it's kind of like social media is real but it's not you know um, somebody may look really happy but that doesn't mean they don't have the same issues or troubles that you have on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. and I think that has been the birth of a lot of these new applications for teenagers mm -hmm. right yeah like Dong, like um, there's another one What's called. What's Dong? Uh, Dong is actually a dating app, which is anonymous. What and the? it picks up your geolocation, so you'll pick up uh, within a 150 mile radius. Um, and so there's another one that you could actually chat to total strangers and just vent, or Axe FM. This is yeah. a very popular one too, where you can be anonymous on the app. Yeah. Uh, and it's very popular with um, teenagers as well, where um, you could actually be asking a question from any stranger. So it could get very risky very quickly. Wow. You know, but, but <laughs> I, I'm hearing you. And I'm, my mind is blown away, especially with the, with the amount of apps that's out there. That is, and these things are very dangerous. But you, you did mention that, you know, you can't hide it. Just introduce them to it, but you have to do it subtly. Yes. But at the same time, it's, uh, for some folks, they might say, you know what, Minor, that's, that's actually, you're actually giving them the right of way. Mm -hmm. What the conversation is going to be like what, as you introduce. I think, one, you have to set limits and boundaries. Right, so introducing them to a tablet and just having a certain number of apps and the appropriate apps, you know, yeah. like my kid is three and I swear she acts like she's six, <laughs> you know, and the way they manipulate, uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, she's on YouTube Kids. Uh, we ensure that she only watches her age appropriate content, um, so also setting the right permissions and privacy settings for your kid. Yeah to ensure that they're not straying away. Not to say that they won't, but that will definitely minimize the incidence of them venturing into one of these yeah. apps that they shouldn't be venturing into. Yeah. Um, another way of doing it could be, uh, and I see a lot of families doing it, where they open an Instagram account or a Facebook, Facebook account for their pet. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a really great way of co-managing an account and showing them to be respectful, 
to be modest, mm -hmm. uh, to be safe with what they're sharing, mm -hmm. um, you know, just showing them like best practices of yeah. what can happen and what's out there. You know, it's kind of like a hand-holding wow. uh, <laughs> And show them mechanism. how public it is, too, oh like gosh. anybody can access. But you skipped over one, of, and you said it, and I think a lot of people don't know that. There are special YouTube settings. Kids love YouTube, and I sometimes I'm amazed at the things they're finding online. They just jump from video. Anybody who videos goes on videos, YouTube yes. knows. You jump from one thing yeah, to, to the next. another. So what can you do to ensure that your child is limited to age-appropriate videos on, on their YouTube, YouTube app? Yes. Well, there's a couple of things you could do, not just on YouTube, but on your iOS devices um, and on Google Android devices. Mm -hmm. You know, you could ensure that the right settings are set for the age limitation, and all you have to do is go in settings and set those limitations. Mm -hmm. Okay. In addition to that, uh, for specific apps, like um, just from the top of my head, YouTube has a YouTube version for kids. Okay. Where they do um, Facebook Lives, and you know, the content is just very kid oriented like you know you'll see uh, a little girl in pajamas in her room playing with her dolls yeah you know and oh, my kid yeah awesome. my kid will watch that for oh, hours i know i don't know like, yeah and that's I'm a like, whole other club. conversation <laughs> but anyway <laughs> packages. Like, um, so youtube has a, a kids version yeah. for them oh, um, my God. so does netflix you yeah. know netflix has different account settings that you could set for kids so then the different content that would be served up for them would be kid appropriate depending yeah. on your age. Yeah. Um, the same thing you could do with your Google browsers, with Chrome, with Safari, with Opera, with Internet Explorer. You know, you could set these settings and mm -hmm. actually browse through the history. You know, one of the things is that as a parent, you have to be there um, digitally, if you yeah. may. You know, you have to spend some time at the end of the day just going through your kid's iPad or laptop or yeah. phone and you know checking out what they're searching for. Yeah. You know, because this will be red alerts or indications for you. Is there any way to prevent password protecting things or getting past their passwords or? No, I think the best thing would be to share, to one, have you create the accounts for your kid. Mm -hmm. okay. So you share that responsibility. So you know yes. okay. And as they become more mature and you see them being more... Um, more responsible? More responsible mm -hmm. in the way they browse and what they search for, mm -hmm. then you could start ease off a little. But okay. it doesn't mean that it's 100% fail proof. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and glad you mentioned that because Teen Safe actually can monitor what kids are searching for on their iPad or on their mobile. That's Teen Safe is an app, is it right? It's an app. app? It's, it has a small fee, I think, of nine ninety nine a oh, month. Oh, that is worth it. <laughs> but, I mean, if you want to have the peace of mind, you know, just thinking about different, uh, like if somebody's been cyber bullied, they're most likely yeah. going to search keywords. Or if your child is taking, exactly. you know, pictures that are not appropriate. Exactly. There's also this new site, right? So, um, and this is where I agree with you. I think parents just have to stay on top of the ball. And I didn't know. I only found out because people were using it in Belize. And when I read more, I realized mm -hmm. that there's a lot of bullying that takes place. It's, I'm going to say it wrong because I don't even know how you call it. It's a Sarah uh, app. And so it's anonymous comments and conversation. So we say what, like if I am on it, I say whatever I want mm -hmm. about you. You don't know who you're talking to. So bullying mm -hmm. takes place. Soliciting takes place. There, there are kids in Belize things. that are using uh, it. You what's know? the name of Sarah? I can't pronounce it. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know, learn what's happening. There's, yeah. yeah, and that's one of the challenges parents have in this day and age also, just keeping abreast of every new technology and application out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, it's, it's actually mind boggling, like I mentioned, to know the amount of things that are out there. But you did mention that this app, uh, especially in terms of tracking teens, there's a fee to it. Uh, you know, here in Belize, I, I, you would want to, you would want to get something that that's readily available, and you don't have mm -hmm. to pay for it. Is there anything that you I could go I, on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the things that I think would be um, free trial version, if you may, um, just your cloud. You know, if your kid has a device, don't let them open their own i uh, Apple ID or their own Google ID, you know, you open one for them and then what will happen will be whatever they're browsing or taking photos of will be backed up to that cloud. Mm. And at any point in time, you could log on to that Apple ID and check out what photos are on that cloud because mm. it backs up every day. So you'll be able to monitor at least the photos and videos that they're sharing. And, yeah. I, and I think that's a huge concern, you know, just talking about brand 
um, not just brand reputation, but personal digital reputation, you know, it goes a long way. Um, having that conversation with your kid and the do's and don'ts of sharing, you know, now um, you could actually record video chats on your phone, and I think a lot of people didn't know that no, didn't. Uh, in the beginning, so we saw surplus of uh, videos, inappropriate videos, yeah. um, from different uh, live video chats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And so where they think they may be safe, they're not. And it, I think that's probably an important conversation that you let them know that anybody can record on the other end, uh, exactly. whether it's a screenshot, if it's one of those disappearing photos, it's still a screenshot mm -hmm. yeah. um, of what you've sent. What do you think is the one thing that you find parents are most oblivious about? I think the um, jailbreaking app, yeah. um, I think it wasn't very popular. I think maybe over the past five years, I've seen friends use it to hide stuff from their girlfriends. Mm -hmm. But I think kids are a lot more savvy mm -hmm. finding different ways to, um, to hide hack. stuff within yeah. their phone. So there are apps that are looking like one thing, but really are just holding a whole secret realm of their phone. Yeah, you could be living a secret lifestyle, you know, and you have no idea. And you know, and you would ask your kid, is everything okay? And they'll tell you, yeah. But, you but again, when you get into your child's phone, your teen's phone, and uh, you only see calculators or these apps, <laughs> how do you detect that it's there? You, that is you have to become very techie savvy. One, to be able to identify them, and you have to literally go in each app and make sure it is what they say they are. Yeah. Uh, there's no way around it, you yeah. know? Mm. So the apps <laughs> Very that you, challenging. You, I know, but <laughs> it's, it's like protecting your child from anything else. The danger is yeah. online and real. So you spoke of Teen Safe, which is um, uh, one of the options, uh, sharing an iCloud, uh, other advice to parents or apps that we can utilize, whether paid or free, doesn't matter. I think there's also Net Nanny, okay. right? And I think there's, um, um, there's one watchdog uh, that one is there's also a free version to it which is really good um, and I think you have to also remember that when you install these apps on your kids phone they become aware <laughs> right so then they're gonna go and find Cydia yeah. which is a jailbreaking app to hide stuff because they know they're being monitoring yeah. mm. right yeah. so then you have to be a step or two ahead yeah. while they do respect that you are snooping around with them. They're going to hide stuff from you. Yeah. So then it's not enough. And that's why I say it's not 100% uh, fail proof yeah. for that same reason, you know. So there has to be a mutual trust. Yeah. Uh, that's to be and a conversation, yeah. communication open to talk exactly. about it. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Minor, I know we just scratched the surface, <laughs> but we're out of time. And this is so important. I think one it reminds us of just the realm of possibilities that exist online. Yeah. But two, there are some things we can use, at least for yeah. now, while parents work on building that communication and trust. Mm -hmm. Right? Any final advice? Um, stay tech savvy. I know it's very difficult to stay abreast of technology, but you have to. You have to be involved. You have yeah. to be there, not just physically, but also digitally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, one advice I could give parents is if your kid is in 10 apps, you go and open an account in these same 10 apps because you want to know exactly who they're going to be there. interacting okay. with, that what kind of stuff they're going to be finding in these apps, and to ensure that the app is age appropriate for your kid. Yeah, mm, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking about Jada's Got Your Backpack Project. So stay tuned.